Today, we're gonna to talk about a couple of different tools you can use to manage your Tasmoda devices. I've talked about using Tasmo Admin in the past, but today I'm gonna to talk about using Tasmo Backup for backing up your devices and Tasmo Device Manager for managing your devices. So let's get started. So why not just use Tasmo Admin as I've shown in my previous videos? Well, you can do things a lot of different ways in Home Assistant and also in this case with Tasmo Device Manager, it's a standalone tool. Uh, it just gives you options to do things. I've also had some comments about Tasmo Admin being hard on the CPU of the Tasmoda devices because it tends to hammer those with HTTP requests and those little processors just, um, they get tired after a while. So what we're gonna do is just demonstrate these other tools. They're just tools that you can add to your tool set and accomplish some of the same things that you can with Tasmo Admin. And then it's up to you to use the tool that you think is best for your situation. So we're gonna start with Tasmo Admin. And Tasmo Admin is available on GitHub as a, a standalone download. The wiki article actually tells you how to install it. Uh, there's a releases page, so you can get to that. So you follow the rabbit trail down to releases, and then you download, in my case, the x86 package. I've already downloaded that, I've already installed it. So let's go over to the device manager and take a look at what it looks like. Okay, when you first fire up the Tasmoda device manager, you've got to do some configuration settings. And the way Tasmoda device manager works is using MQTT. So your devices need to communicate over MQTT. You need to have a broker set up on something. You can either have a standalone broker or you can have a broker on Home Assistant, which is the way I'm doing it. So in order to set up the broker, you just go in here and you set the settings for your broker. You set your host name, you set your port, you set your username and your password for the MQTT broker, and then you can tell it to connect on startup. Uh, that's up to you. I'm gonna not do that because I wanna have this not run all the time if I don't if I forget and leave it open for some reason and or it opens up but I do want to start it up to be able to talk to any of my devices. And you can see right now that they all have the little red X's. That means they're not talking to the device manager. And so under MQTT, I can start or connect to the broker. And now we're going to start seeing the status of all my plugs. And it's almost instantaneous. Instantaneous. I have three Tasmona devices. I have my Sonoff S31, which you saw me demonstrate in the video, as well as this Cloudfree X10S. And then I have a new plug which is also an S31. So anyway, what we have here is we have the three plugs and we're looking basically at the main interface. It gives you the device. It gives you the module that it's running, the power status of the power switch on it, uh, the load average, the link count, and the uptime. And this is just the basic overview. Now we can come down here and click on health. This gives you a little bit different uh, information. How many times it's booted, the reason it's booted, and then the MQTT count, the downtime, and then the RSSI of the Wi-Fi signal. So if you're having an issue with one of your devices, check the troubleshooting or the health section and see if there's an issue with Wi-Fi connection or anything like that. We can also look at the firmware version. So I'm running 9.5 on two of my plugs and 9.4. This is the one I just flashed with binary or the, the software I had or firmware I had on my PC. So it requires an upgrade. And then of course we have the Wi-Fi settings gives me the MAC address, the IP address, the gateway, the SSID of the device it's connected to, the channel, which you know should be the same if you're on the 1AP, and then again, the RSSI value. And then your MQTT information, the topic, the full topic, the command topic, status topic, telemetry topic, et cetera, and then the group topic. So those are the basic overview of this Tasmona Device Manager. Now you can come in here and you can do a couple of things with these top tab sections. Uh, and I think you can't see those, there we go. These top tab sections, you can click on console and whatever device you're actually on is what it's gonna open a console for. So if I wanna look at the console of my freezer plug, it's gonna show me what's going on with that freezer plug as it comes across the device or as it comes across the manager here. I can also click on another plug or another device, and I can open the console for that device. So now you see I have two different consoles for two different devices, 
And you can see now that the telemetry for the freezer plug just updated and it shows up here in the console. So if you wanna watch what's happening with your devices, independently of each other, as a matter of fact, like this did, you can open the consoles and watch those as it comes in via MQTT. So you can see both of those are updating uh, in real time and you can see what they're doing. In addition to that uh, console stuff, you can also come up here and you can set some rules. Now I don't have any rules set. And one of the things you notice when I clicked on rules is it read the plug. And once again, the rules are based on the device that you have selected at the time you click the button. I could also open the rules for the freezer plug. And now I have tabs open across the top here that give me different rules for the different devices. And it tells you the device name. Now, if you don't name your devices, you're going to have a hard time keeping up with which one is which. I always recommend naming these devices in your configuration so you know which one is which. Don't leave it default Tasmoda underscore whatever because you'll never know what it is. I don't do anything with the variables, the memories, or, uh, or anything like this in the plug itself. Now, if you don't run the actual home assistant or some sort of uh, automation software, you can do things like set up timers in these plugs. And once again, and let me get off this plug. I don't want to do it on that one. Let's take this plug here and I'll set up a timer. And what this timer does is it allows you to turn the switch on or off or uh, in, in this case, that's all it will do. So you have a power on or off or toggle, so you could flip it, or you could go by a rule if you wanted to do a rule. But let's say we wanted to turn the plug off at, um, I don't know, let's say sunrise. Let's say it's connected to a light or something like that, a lamp or whatever. You can set the time to, or the sunrise time, and it, it automatically fills it in for you. And then you can set the days of the week that it operates on. And of course you have to arm it for it actually to work. It tells you now that timer one will set the power off somewhere in 22 minutes centered around the eight o'clock and 17 minute before sunrise. And it will do it only one time because we don't have the repeat set. I can click on repeat and then say it will do it every sunrise, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So every day. So it's very smart. Then if you were to save this, you would see that the data is sent to the device. And this is the study plug. So we should actually see down here that the study plug timer enabled was sent and then it was updated with the result of, of success. It basically repeats back what you said. So now what happens that plug will turn off at sunrise and you can come back here and look at that as well for the timers and you can see what it's set to. So it will turn off at sunrise uh, every day. So you can do stuff with the rules that way or the timers on buttons. And, and a lot of this setting stuff that we're looking at here are things that you can set based on the Tasmoda firmware. So these are, these are options that are available in Tasmoda that you can control from the Tasmoda device manager. So your button debounces, your button retains, your set options or all of these things as well. And if you're curious about what any of these things do, you can click on the wiki link and it will ask you what thing to open it in, but it will take you to the actual Tasmoda page and explain to you what all of these things mean. So you have all your set options here. And these are, these again are Tasmoda related specific, specific to Tasmoda options and configuration settings. So this particular Tasmoda device manager lets you operate on the Tasmoda settings based on the Tasmoda firmware. So it's not something that is specific to this device manager, it's specific to Tasmoda. Device manager gives you a nice UI to be able to do things with. So we won't change anything on the options. And then switches, uh, same kind of thing. You have switch debounces, retains, switch modes. You can set all this stuff. Again, more options. And anything you wanna know about is in the Tasmoda wiki under buttons and switches. And then the wiki pages are specific to each one of these themselves. And you can set all those as well. And then power. Uh, once again, you have just a bunch of power settings that you can set. In, in addition to that, you can do interlocks um, and more option settings. So it's all Tasmoda stuff. So read up on Tasmoda if you're not familiar with it. 
For a standard power wall plug switch, a lot of those options aren't necessary. You're gonna be turning the switch on, you're gonna be turning the switch off, you're gonna be checking the status. Uh, if you wanna know what the actual telemetry is from a switch, you can pick one of these. So I'll take the freezer plug and I'll click on telemetry. And what you see over here on the side is the actual data, the telemetry data coming from the plug and that's coming from the telemetry topic in MQTT. So in this case, we're running 40 kilowatt hours uh, total since I reset the plug or whatever, one kilowatt hour yesterday about 0.7 today, um, and currently it's not running, and the freezer is off in other words, but it is setting at 120 volts, so the in input voltage is correct for the US. So you can get that on any of these. Again, you can get telemetry individual, or you can look at different telemetry, telemetry windows for different plugs at the same time if you need to, or different devices. If you're, And this is helpful if you're trying to look at and compare devices, uh, at the same time, a troubleshoot devices, or in this case, if you have 20 or 30 MQTT devices, you can look and get a status, a health report, a firmware update report uh, on all your devices in one nice, pretty display. And that's what makes this nice versus um, trying to manage your MQTT devices, devices separately. You can see all of those. Now, these are all auto discovered, by the way, based on your MQTT uh, setup. And you can set up auto discovery patterns. If you have some sort of non-default MQTT discovery pattern set on your Tasmona devices, you can add a pattern in here. That's, that's the standard pattern, the default pattern. You can add a pattern in here for it to auto discover. So if you don't have one of your devices showing up for some reason, check and make sure that your auto discovery pattern is correct. If it is, and it's all set right, then you'll have these show up like that. Uh, up here, you can do an all on and all off for the power switch. That's it in a nutshell for the MQTT device manager. It's a nice, simple way to be able to control your devices, look at your devices in a one-stop shop. All right, so now let's go over and let's take a look at the Tasmoda backup. So Tasmo Backup is an add-on to Home Assistant, but if you try to go to Home Assistant and search for it in the add-on store, you're not gonna find it because you need to add it the repository that contains the Tasmo Backup. And Dan Med created Tasmo Backup and there are instructions on the GitHub side. Again, I'll link the GitHub stuff to uh, the comments down below or in the uh, description down below so you can see both of these. So to add the repository, you're just gonna copy this link address and you're gonna go into supervisor, click the three dots right here under repositories. And then you can paste in the repository name and click on add. And once it's added, it will show up as a repository. Now, when I added this a minute ago, it gave me an invalid repository for some reason. But when I closed this out and came back into it, it is now listed as a as a valid repository and it's ready for use. So now what I can do, and you see this automatically, is I'm searching for Tasmoda and Tasmo Backup actually shows up in here. So what I'm gonna do is click on this. I'm gonna go through the install to install this repository on my device. And there's no um, specific things you need to do other than just click on install. It also is ingress available, which means you can, can uh, connect to it directly from your Home Assistant instance without having to log in separately. And it will also allow you to add it to the, the panel on the left here, the sidebar, so you can click it directly from that sidebar. Okay, so once Tasmo Backup is installed, we wanna go ahead and select any of the options we want here. Start on boot, uh, watchdog, auto, auto update, or show in sidebar. I'm gonna do show in sidebar so it shows up over here. I think there it is right there. And then I'm gonna check the configuration, see if there's anything we need to do specifically, and I don't see anything needed here. Uh, log files are blank, of course, and then we're going to start it up and then we're going to watch our log file and make sure that everything starts up without a bunch of errors. I always I always advocate checking the log files because you never know what might happen. You want to make sure it's all good. All right, so it says it successfully has started up and we're ready to go. Let's make sure we can get to the web UI. So we can go back to info here. And sometimes you have to refresh the screen to get the web UI link to show up. And also you can use the 
sidebar here to click it. So going into that web UI, now what we have is we have a screen here that shows us absolutely nothing. And it's because we need to do some configuration first. Now there's two ways you can add devices to Tasmo Backup. Uh, the first one is to use the IP address range and put a password in if you've got passwords on your Tasmo devices. And you can search this entire IP range for any devices that are in uh, the network. The other option, and the one that I'll use today, is to configure Tasmo Backup with your MQTT information so that it can find it via MQTT. Now, here are the settings that you can set up in Tasmo Backup. You can set the number of rows. Uh, if you have a, over 100 devices, it'll, it'll paginate those. Uh, theme, light or dark, depending on your device, set to auto if you want to. Default password, if you have a password set on your Tasmoto devices. Uh, you can update the device when doing backups, automatically add new devices. I put that to no because I want to see what it's finding. If uh, for whatever reason I ever end up with a rogue Tasmoto device, I don't want it automatically adding to this and then backing up stuff without me knowing about it. The host is where you set up your MQTT information, just like we did on the Tasmo Device Manager. We'll set up a host with a port and a username. And the password for your broker. And then MQTT topic is, we'll just leave all of the rest of this as default. Uh, I will change the back Mac, Mac <laughs> the backup max days old to keep. I will leave that as default, but I will say, I only want to keep the last, let's say four backup files and the data directory. I will also leave as default. And then when I save this and I go back to the main interface, I should have, and I do, I do have now an MQTT discover section here. This is how it will find the devices, MQTT devices on your uh, MQTT broker or within your MQTT infrastructure. So clicking on MQTT discover, it now goes and looks at your MQTT broker and watches for your Tasmoda devices. And it will present you a list here in just a moment when it finds all the devices. And then once it defines the, finds the devices, then we can add those devices to our Tasmo backup. This process sometimes takes a couple of minutes depending on a lot of factors. I've never seen it take less than maybe 30 seconds to 45 seconds, and I've only got three devices. So and now you can see here that we have those three devices showing up. I can add all of these individually, or I can do a select all. And when I click on add devices, then they will show up in my Tasmo backup list. And it obviously tells you it's done it successfully. And so let's go through the interface real briefly. This is pretty simple. You get, you get the name of your device. And remember how I said, I want make sure I wanted to name all my devices. Well, I haven't named this one yet. And so it's a standard Tasmoda name. I need to change it to what it's gonna be in the end. Here's the IP address of the device. Here's whether it's authenticated or, or has a password, which it doesn't. The version's running on the devices. Last backup, of course, is blank because it's brand new here. No files. This will tell you the number of files in the backup directory for the device. You can force a backup right now. You can edit some information. So the name, the IP, and the auth, you can edit that stuff right there. So if your IP changes, you can change it here. You can change the name here. And then if you put a password on a device, you can add the password here. And if you, if you have different passwords for different devices, then you'll have to go in here and you'll have to add the password individually for each device. Okay, so then we have our delete. You can actually delete these from the, in, the uh, Tasmo backup. When you do that, it deletes the device and the files. You can actually just go back and re-add it and start over again uh, if you wanna do that. So there's the three devices. Now, if I wanna do a backup on a single device, I can click backup and it will go back up that device and it will then tell you when the last backup was and the number of files as well as give you a box here telling you that it was successful. So now I have a single file backed up last at this time. And if I click on the file box itself, it will take me to a listing of files for the device. I think, there we go. It'll take me to a li this listing of files I have for the device. I can download the file or I can restore the file back onto the device. 
And so that's an easy way for you to do a simple restore. So let me go back to Tasmo Backup. And then I can back up all of my devices by clicking this button right here. So let me click that now. And now all backups have completed. And one thing you'll notice is that uh, I have one file for each of the backups. And I can edit the file again. Let me just edit this name. I'm gonna give this the name it's supposed to be, which would be Fridge Plug and submit that. And now this is called Fridge Plug. And if I wanted to back up this again, like so Fridge Plug, I changed the name. Let me back it up again. I will see an increment showing that I have now uh, two devices. Now this is interesting because I haven't seen this before. I just noticed that when I back this up, even though I changed the name here, when I back it up, it's obviously this particular uh, device because the file uh, number of files incremented to two, but it's changed the name back. Update device name when doing backups. So what it did is it went out to the device and it got the device name from the device itself and reverted what I had changed. If I set this to no and I save it down here, once I've saved it and I go back over here to the main listing, you can see now that if I change the name, so let me go ahead and edit this, I'll change the name successfully updated. Now, when I run a backup on this one, it shouldn't change the name and it did not. So you can see it stays the same. Now you can, you can set that however you want to. I don't like it that way because what I want to do is change the name on the device itself. I don't want this thing to override it because, because then I don't know what device name it actually is. And that just clues me into the fact that I have a device that's not correctly configured. So now again, I'll do another backup and it'll change the name back to what it is on the device, which you can see here. So not a bug, just the way it's designed to work. And of course you can see now I have a number four here. I have four different uh, backup files and it did save this one with the name that I saved it under when I had it set to not update the name. Uh, so what I'll do now then is I'll go in here and I'll delete this just to, as a demonstration. So we'll delete the Tasmoda device because I have four backups. It will delete the device. It will also remove all the backup files. So we'll give that a second. Now I only have two devices and it was deleted from the database. Now, if I do another discovery or let's just try this other discovery one, we'll just search my network just to show that it works. Uh, and I have to do through the end of the network range and do a discover. We'll see how long this takes. I think this takes a little bit longer to do network discovery versus doing MQTT discovery. Okay, that took about, I don't know, about a minute. There's no indication here that actually tells me that these are already in my system or in the Tasmo backup database. Uh, I just have to, I just know these two are obviously, and then this one is not. And now all three devices are added. And of course, this one has no backup on it yet because we haven't run a backup. So I can do that now. Now, one of the other things I didn't mention here uh, in the settings is, is this automatically backs up and it's got a backup all minimum hours between backups. So it's currently set at default of 23 hours. So every 23 hours, it should back up all your devices at a minimum of 23. It won't do it any earlier than 23 hours. Uh, if you feel like you need to do that once a day, do that. Otherwise you can set this to uh, every couple of days or whatever, just depending on how often you make changes on your devices. And, and then of course, it'll keep up to four backups as the, the setting I have here. You can also do number of days to keep as well. So I just want to point that out that it does an automatic backup and it'll generate these files for me up to four files before it rolls off the end. And that's how, that's all you do basically with the, uh, the Tasmo backup. It allows you to take all of your stuff and store a backup so that in case you have an issue with one of your devices, you can restore that. And so all this is now is you now have three tools. You have Tasmo Admin, which I've shown in a different video. You have Tasmo Backup to back up your devices. And then you have Tasmo Device Manager to manage your devices in a standalone non-Home Assistant connected way. So you can take all your Tasmoda devices and you can run those uh, outside of Home Assistant and manage those outside of Home Assistant if you wanted to do that. So I showed you those tools. I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any comments, put those down below. I'm also on Discord, so hit me up on Discord if you have any questions. Uh, and we'll see you on the next video. Oh, and if you're not a subscriber, take a moment to push that button. 
hit that bell icon, hit that like button if you liked the video. I really do appreciate it. And consider supporting me on Ko-fi and Patreon. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.